All right. Good evening, good evening, good evening. Giving people a moment to come on. My wife just making a bunch of noise there. Hallelujah. <laughs> uh, Hi, everybody. Share with friends. Yes, please do. Well, my wife and I were away for a couple days. We just got back. We're celebrating 41 years of marriage. And uh, uh, we had a great time in Southern California, down around uh, uh, just north of uh, San Diego. And it was a lot of fun. And so we're glad to be back and get back with it. Amen. Uh, so I was uh, just praying and seeking the Lord today about what to share the last couple days, he's had something on my heart, and, and I'm kind of piggybacking off of and, and bouncing off of what I shared on, on Sunday. And Sunday, the message was, are you still standing? If you didn't get a chance to, to see that, it's available on YouTube. You can go on YouTube and watch it. Uh, but uh, uh, I want to talk tonight about, about tending your garden or maintaining your garden. And so I want to talk a little bit about, about maintenance and, and uh, look at some scriptures and... Uh, We'll have a good time. Amen? Hallelujah. And so in Genesis chapter 2 and uh, verse 8, it said, The Lord God planted a garden in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed in it. And in verse 15, he says, Then the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden to tend and keep it. To tend and keep it. And uh, uh, the... The King James Version says to dress and keep it. Uh, but, you know, to tend means to act like it's an attendant. He had to take care of it. Amen? And uh, I don't know whether you've, you've discovered for yourself, but, but there's, there's a lot of things in our life that we have to maintain. Amen? And so I looked up the word maintain in the Webster's, and it says to keep in an existing state as of repair. All right? And so when you look at that, uh, it also means preserve from failure or declining. Uh, it also means to sustain against opposition or danger, to uphold, defend, to continue, carry on, or keep up. And so if, if we don't, if we don't uh, keep things in an existing state, it begins to deteriorate. Amen. And uh, so we have homes, uh, we have cars, uh, our bodies, uh, relationships, our marriage, our lawns, our power tools, our machinery, you know, our toys, our boats, whatever we got. If we don't maintain them, then they, they'll deteriorate and they also lose the value of what the particular thing is. And so we have to uh, maintain things because if we don't maintain it, it costs a lot. And when you look at that, and it's our walk with Jesus, if we don't maintain our walk with Jesus, it can cost us, you know? And I believe that in the, in the time we're in with all this COVID and everything else that's going on, it's really taken a toll or it's hard. There's pressure on people to continue to walk with God. And, and so some are, are like falling back a little bit. And I believe this is a season where God is bringing the prodigals back. And, and if you happen to be one that, that maybe has uh, slipped a little bit, well, the Bible says, come boldly to the throne of grace that you may obtain help in time of need. Amen. And so some of the things we have to attend to or maintain is our cars. You know, if we don't take care of them mechanically, if we don't take care of, of the outside by washing, waxing, uh, doing those kind of things. It's like you, you ever see a car go down the road and, and, and you look at it and uh, we haven't had rain in three months, but it's so dirty and it's just covered with so much uh, from the birds, you know, like they, he, they got caught in a flock of seagulls and, and, and got targeted. And, uh, and, you, and you go, that someone's not really taking care of that. And, it, you know, sometimes I look and, and just out of observation, I'm not pointing fingers at anybody, but out of observation, you'll see cars that, that are only a couple years old, but they've got dings in every corner and scratches on them and, and they're not taken care of. And, and there really is, it's, it's really 
a sad case. Amen. And so we have to change the oil. Okay. You know, uh, I was working in the car business back in, in the sixties. And, uh, uh, I remember whenever you got an oil change, oil change, you went about a thousand miles and you had to change the oil because of the, the quality of the oil. They didn't feel it would hold up. And now we have synthetic oil that you can go 10,000 miles without changing the oil. Same thing with spark plugs. You know, back then, every about 10 or 12,000 miles, you had to have a tune-up, put spark plugs in and everything else. Now, spark plugs will go 100,000 miles. I mean, it's amazing. And uh, so, it's good. Hallelujah. Uh, it's like whenever something happens to your car, you want to you wanna fix it, okay? Like a dent or a scratch. Uh, I remember a few years ago, and uh, one of my uh, forerunners I had, and and I remember that uh, uh, someone uh, was having trouble stopping, and so they had to go to the right, but they caught the right corner and scratched the the bumper up, and and so the, their insurance paid to get it painted, and I took it in, had it all painted up, fixed up. One day I went into uh, a pharmacy to pick up a prescription and I came out, someone had parked beside it, got too close, same bumper, same spot, scratched it all up again, you know, and it's like, ah, come on, man. Hallelujah. But, you know, and same way with polishing and waxing cars. You got to, you got to polish them to keep them up and uh, vacuum and clean out the interior. Amen. You don't want to wait till your, till your coffee cups from your favorite coffee place get stacked up to where it's, they're landing on the seat instead of on the floor. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Hallelujah. Same way with brakes. Brakes wear out. Uh, brake pads wear out. Uh, disc brakes, uh, you know, most cars today have disc brakes. And, and uh, if you wear the brake pad out and don't change it, it can score the rotors and the price of it goes up considerably to repair it. And so, you know, there's little sensors that they put on there so that when the sensor, when it squeals, you can, and I can hear cars in parking lots and stuff backing up, and I hear that little sensor sensor noise, and I'm like, they need to replace the brake pads. And uh, and so, you know, you, you need to take care of it. Same thing with the car. Our cars have computers now that maintain the engine, can tell you when something's wrong, and uh, in our life, we have the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit can, can help us to keep us on course. Hallelujah. Keep us on course. The other thing about maintenance and adverse conditions, it requires more maintenance. You know, if you're in extremely cold, it requires more maintenance, whether it's your home, your car, whatever. And so I believe that, that what we're in right now is some extreme conditions. And, uh, and I believe that, that God has given us what we need so that we can get through these and get through and win. Amen. Hallelujah. So if you look in Genesis 3... And this is the story about, about when, when uh, the serpent, uh, verse 1, it says, Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Has God indeed said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden? You know, has God really said? And, and he still does that today where he'll, he'll, he'll get us to try to question, Are we really, are we really, are we really believing what God said? You can believe what God said. When God says something, you know, you can stick to it. Amen? You can take it to the bank, so to speak. It said, And the woman said to the servant, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Then the serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die, for God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. And God was not saying that they would physically die, spiritually they died. The, their, their relationship with God was, was, was just severed, basically. And, uh, and so the, it says in verse 6, So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree desirable to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate, and she gave to her husband, and he ate also. And so then a little later the, in the cool of the day, when the, the presence of God came walking through the garden, and they went and hid because they saw that they were naked and they took fig leaves and they, they the leaves and they sewed them together and made, made uh, some clothing. You know, they, they were the first uh, clothing manufacturers. Hallelujah. And uh, so the Lord said to Adam, where are you? You know, I always say this, if, if God has to ask where you are, of course, he knows where you are. But if he's asking, it's because he wants you to realize you're not where you're supposed to be. Amen. 
And so he says, so Adam says, I heard your voice in the garden. I was afraid. And so God said, when, who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you that you should not eat? You see, one of the things the enemy wants to do is he wants to try to, to make it look like God's trying to keep us from things instead of protecting us. You know, there's certain things that, again, there's certain ways of living that God says this isn't the best way to live. This isn't good for you. And it's not, it's not like he's trying to take all your fun away. You know, I mean, I've been saved for 49 years and uh, I've had all kind of fun in my life, you know, but it's good, clean fun. And so God is good. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. And so if you look in the natural, if, if you own a home, and uh, I always say that, that the thing that grows best in your, in your flower beds it grows better than the flowers, it's the weeds and the grass that gets in there. Amen. You know, the, the wind will blow seeds and they'll get into the, to the soil and they'll start to grow. And, uh, and so you, if you don't go through and begin to, you know, take your hula ho, go in and, and work it, uh, the longer you leave them, the harder it gets it is to take them out because the root is so so strong and you go to pull them out, you're pulling a whole clump of soil you're, or you've got to really dig it, you know. And so it's the same thing with things in our life. The longer we leave the wrong thing in our life, you know, it takes more work to get it out. So it's good to, to take care of it when it first shows up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now look at Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. Ephesians, Philippians 2. And we're looking at verse 12. It says, Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obey, obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. You know, if you found out that to, to walk with God and to live this life, it takes some work. You've got to work at it, okay? And and he and goes on, it says, For it is God who works in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. It says, Do all things without complaining and disputing, that you may become blameless and harmless, children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation among whom you shine as lights of the world, holding fast the word of life, so that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I have not run in vain or labored in vain. And so he's saying, work out your salvation. You know, it's a, there's work involved with it. Amen. And uh, if you don't like work, it's, it's hard, you know. Okay. But, uh, you know, he gives us what we need so that we can, we can win at this thing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we have to tend our own garden. And there's those people around you can either help you in tending your garden or they can be a hindrance. Okay. Evil company corrupts good. And so it's not like you want to, and, and I'm not saying you got to separate yourself from everybody, but there's certain people that if, if they're not a good influence, you really have to limit your time with them, okay? And you may work with some, and so you can't just cut them off, and, and I'm not suggesting you, that you have to cut them off completely unless they're really pushing on you to go down the wrong road, and it may come to a point where you got to go, I'm sorry, but I can't walk with you. I cannot continue to be your friend if that's what you're going to do, and that's how you're going to affect my life. Amen? Hallelujah. i got to maintain myself and get a little water here. Amen. Hallelujah. Look at Matthew chapter 3. Matthew chapter 3. This is the parable about the sower. And so Jesus is speaking here. Or, pardon me, Matthew 13. I said three. I meant 13. Sorry. Hallelujah. So in Matthew 13 and verse 3, it says, Then he spoke many things to them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seed fell by the wayside, and the birds came and devoured them. Some fell on stony places where they did not have much earth, and they immediately sprang up because they had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up and choked them. But others fell on good ground and yielded a crop, some a hundredfold, some sixty, and some thirty. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. 
Now let's go over to uh, verse 18, and he, he's explaining, he said, therefore hear the parable of the sower. He's explaining the, the, the parable, and he says, when anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, then the wicked one comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart, that this is he who receives seed by the wayside. And so one of the things we need to get is get understanding. You know, when we start to understand that, that what God says in his word and, and what, he, what he wants us to, to believe and walk in is going to benefit our life and be productive in our life and help our life. You know, he's the, he, you know when you start believing it, you go, I understand. We need understanding. We need, we need comprehension about what he's talking about. Amen? Because when you don't have understand, the enemy can come along and snatch it away. Like, no, no, that's not true. That's not true. Sometimes you have to read, study. You've got to investigate and get it in you. Amen? Hallelujah. It says, but he who received the seed on stony places, this is he who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy, yet he has no root in himself, but endures only for a while, for when tribulation or persecution arises because of the word, immediately stumbles. Now he who received seed among the thorns is he who care, hears the word, he, he has, and the cares of this life and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and he becomes unfruitful. But he who received the seed on the good ground is he who hears the word and understands, and he who indeed bears fruit and produces some a hundred, some sixty, and some thirtyfold. And so you see, if you look at in the natural, in, in the ground, it's like when you till the ground, when you work the ground, it, it's easier for the seed to go in and take root. And so as, as, as we continue to tend our garden and keep out the things that aren't supposed to be there, don't allow them to take root, then it's going to affect how you walk and, and the things you're going to do in your life. Amen? Hallelujah. Proverbs 4.23 says... Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it spring the issues of life. You know, you have to guard your heart. And, and uh, you know, there's so many things that come against us and things we have to deal with. And, you know, we get, uh, you know, people do things or don't do things and we take offense to them. Things like that, that we have to watch that, that we don't become offended and become bitter. You know, and when we get bitter, then it begins to uh, uh, affect us in a lot of different ways, you know, bitterness, uh, when you get around a bitter person sometimes and, and some of the stuff that, that the way they act and some of the things they say and some of their attitudes, it's just not good, you know? And, and so you don't want to be a bitter person. You don't want to be a bitter person. You know, no matter what happened to you, Jesus is bigger than that. Jesus can take care of that. If you cast your care on him, if you deal with him, you know, come boldly to the throne of grace that he may, you know, that you may obtain help in time of need. And there's times when we have needs and there's times that we need to really reach out to the Lord. Amen? We need to do that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, in uh, Matthew 13, in verse 24, here's another parable he put forth to them. It says, The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while the man slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But when the grain had sprouted and produced a crop, then the tares also appeared. And so there's, there's things the enemy wants to try to sow into your life and try to bring across your path. And you've got to keep clearing out the ground, clearing out the ground. Don't let the thing get in your home. Don't allow it to take root in, and deal in, where you have to deal with it on a daily basis. You have to, when you recognize it, deal with it, you know, drive it out, pray it out, do what you need to do. You know, maybe you need to get some counsel. Maybe you need to, you know, get some counsel from someone. Talk with your friends, your pastor, you know, your leaders and say, you know, pray for me. You know, I'm dealing with this. Can you help me understand this? Can you help me get through this thing? Because people want to help you. People want to help you. They love you. They want to help you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Proverbs 23, 7 says, as a man thinks, so is he. As a man thinks, so is he. And the battle is up here. The battle is in the mind. And the things that we think are, are what cause us to take certain actions and responses, okay? If you're thinking the wrong thing, then it can lead you to the wrong actions and the wrong responses. Hallelujah. You know, and, and I believe one of the things that the enemy is really working on right now is he's lying to people to say that people don't care about them. 
People don't care. I just feel that right now that there's some of you are watching. There's a couple of you watching that you, you're really, really almost, you're not there yet, but if it keeps going, you could almost get paranoid about what people think about you. And the fact of the matter is, most of what you're hearing or what you're sensing is a bunch of lies. It's absolute lies. Don't don't buy into what the enemy is, is trying to feed you. Amen? Listen to the Lord. Pray. You know, it's like maintaining your car, all right? If you maintain your car, you put so many miles on it, you've got to change the oil, okay? And, and so, but we need, we need maintained daily. Daily we need to main, be maintained. And our relationship with the Lord is, is not something that, you know, don't go from Sunday to Sunday. You need to talk with Him, pray, you know? Spend a few minutes in, your, in, in the Word, read, read some scripture. Build yourself up, pray. Do what you need to do there. Amen? Hallelujah. Look at Isaiah 55. Isaiah. Isaiah 55. And we're going to start in verse 7. It says, let the wicked forsake his way. Well, let's start verse 6. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he's near. Let, a, let the wicked forsake his way and the ush, unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord and he will have mercy on him and to our God and for he will abundantly pardon. Did you hear that? Let the unrighteous man or let the wicked forsake his way and the, un, and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return to the Lord. Because God will have mercy on you. Hallelujah. Verse 8 says, the Lord says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are my ways your ways, says the Lord. See, sometimes what happens is, is we get, we get uh, off track because we have a certain idea, the way things should, well, the way we want them to work, you know, how we want it to come out. And it doesn't always come out exactly how we thought. But he says, my ways aren't yours. My thoughts aren't yours. They're much higher. They're much higher, okay? He says, he says, for the, as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. In verse 10, it says, for, for as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven and do not return there, but water the earth and make it bring forth and bud that it, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. Hallelujah. And so his word is true. His word is true. You know, I believe now more than ever is we really need to, we really need to feed on his word and, and feed on his faithfulness because he's a good God. He's a faithful God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, Adam and Eve allowed the seeds from the enemy, from what the enemy said to them, allowed that, and they began to believe it. Like, well, God's trying to keep something from me. You know, I believe sometimes the reason people, people can believe all, you know, we've been around maybe really strict religious people, that it's all a bunch of do's and don'ts. You know, there's, and, and it's like, well, you can't do that, you can't do this. And so we want to almost sometimes, some people want to, like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to uh, loosen up, and, and sometimes they go way too far the other way, Okay. You know, we don't want to be so strict and so religious, okay? There's freedom in, in the Lord. But then on the other hand, we don't want to be so free that we're living in sin, okay? But there, you, there's, there's a place where you can, on the highway of God, where you can run with God, you can walk with God, and you can have fun in life, and you can enjoy life, and you can have peace. And when you lay down at night, you've got sweet sleep. Hallelujah. That's good. Amen. Hallelujah. And so there's times you got to weed your garden. You got to weed your garden. You got to you got to clean it out. Amen. Hallelujah. Philippians 4:13 says, "I can do all th things through Christ who strengthens me." It's not me that does it. It's through Christ. It's through him. It's through his power, his anointing, his gifting, his counsel. All right? All those things, the spirit that lives inside of us. Holy Spirit, you know, he's the one that that guides and directs us. Amen. 
in uh, John 1 12 it says as many as received him to them he gave the right or the power to become the children of God he gave the power the right to become the children of God okay it's like it's like you have an inheritance okay uh, you're born into a, a very wealthy family and when you become of a certain age whether it be 21 or whatever they decided they said here you we're going to give you part of our wealth so that you can you can uh, uh, be able to build a life and, and, and build a good life and, and enjoy life and do what you need to do, okay? And so, you know, it's like if it doesn't come out of the bank into your hands, you never receive it. It's not going to value you. The other thing is that you can get the money, but if you don't have wisdom, you don't have, have the wisdom to know how to properly handle it, you can go through that money very quickly and end up a poor man or a poor lady, okay? And so it's like we need the wisdom to know how to walk with God. We need the wisdom to be able to move forward with God. And God gives us the wisdom to know how to make right choices and do the right things in our life, amen? The Bible says you have not because you ask not. You know, if you're watching and I feel there's somebody out there that's like, well, I've made choices in my life and it hasn't worked out. Well, start asking God. Jesus, tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me what I need to do. Give me wisdom. Guide my steps. He promised to guide us. Okay. He promises to guide us. Hallelujah. Our part is we got to work out our salvation, clear out our garden, keep it clean. Keep there's certain things you keep out of it. You don't allow into it. Hallelujah. Romans says we're, we're dead to sin and alive to God. Hallelujah. Man, we want, I want to be dead to sin and alive to God. And the more you, you, you spend with the Lord and walk with the Lord and grow with the Lord, okay, you know, the, the stronger you become and you can walk, you can walk and you can win. Amen. If you've been losing a couple of battles, keep fighting. You're going to, it's going to turn. It's going to turn for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, one of the things before, before the truth can set you free, Sometimes you have to recognize the, the thing that's holding you captive, you know. And sometimes the way we do that, the, the Bible says you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Uh, the truth can't set you free. If you don't know the truth, it can't set you free. But when you know the truth, the truth will set you free. It will set you free because you recognize, wait a minute, that's wrong. That's not right. I need to change that. I need to change that, you know. Hallelujah. It's like, you know, when, when I first got saved and even when we first got married, there were, you know, there was certain things that we would do, not bad things. It's just, you know, we had routines that we did and, and how we, we would, you know, go family dinners and stuff like that. And there's nothing wrong with those things. Okay. But as you grow in God and, and as your priorities changed, some of those things changed. Some of the things you like to do, whether, you know, I, I like auto racing. Okay. I don't get to see much auto racing, okay? Because there's other things that I'm busy doing, okay? And you go, well, do you feel bad? And no, I don't feel bad, all right? You know, now during this COVID thing a few weeks ago, I was driving down the road and I thought, you know what? I just love to go to a baseball game and watch a baseball game, you know? And I'm not a big baseball fan, but it was like, boy, that would be a change, all right? That'd be good, all right? So I am human, hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians 10, verse 3 through 5, it talks about our weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to pulling down strongholds. Pulling down strongholds. You know, the word of God and, and the life of God that, that's in you and, and what you pour into you is going to change. It's going to change your life. Hallelujah. In uh, Romans 12, uh, it talks about having our minds renewed that we might know what is that good and perfect and acceptable will of God. And the word of God comes in and, and it washes us and, and renews our mind and, and we can see things clearly, okay? You know, if you've been struggling and, and there's things that are not going good in your life, you know, sometimes you need to just, you know, dive into the word and, you know, and I'm not talking about going from not, ta not reading to go to three hours, you know, that's not going to happen because you're not going to, you're not going to be able to do that. But start with, you know, 5, 10, 15 minutes a day. Just spend a few minutes reading the Bible, you know, and build up from that, okay? 
And the thing is, is it's, it's not just reading the Bible, it's getting something from what you read, okay? So, you know, you, you read, you study, you look, and his word is life. It's life. It's life. I mean, if you go, go a couple days without reading and you open the Bible and just started reading some scriptures, and man, it's just popping off the page at you, and you're going, wow, yeah, yeah, I love this. This is great. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Strongholds is kind of like the, 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 the grass and the weeds that, that take root in your flower bed. And the longer you leave it there, the root goes down deep. And, and then you almost need a shovel to dig it out. You can't just pull it out. Uh, and so uh, the, the, the stronghold sets deep roots into our hearts and minds and affects the actions that we take. Affects the actions we take. And I believe that, that where we're at and what we're dealing with now is, is this whole lockdown, uh, this fear thing. I mean, they've been, the media has been feeding this fear. Is COVID real? Yes. Is it something to, to be uh, concerned about? Yes. We, you need to wash your hands and, and do what you need to do to, to keep yourself safe. But you can't live in fear. You can't be intimidated to where you're afraid to do anything. Okay. You know, and uh, this thing has got the shift in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Psalms 119. Let's look at Psalms 119. And we're going to read verse 9. It says, How can a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed according to your word. Listen to this. With my whole heart, I have sought you. With my whole heart, I have sought you. He says, Oh, let me not wander from your commandments. And it says, Your word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. Okay? There it's talking about, about how much work and, and effort you put into of walking with God. Okay? I mean, this, this is life. Okay? This is life. And it's part of your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 2 Timothy. Look at 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy 2. And we're going to start in verse 14. It says, Remind them of these things, charging them before the Lord not to strive about words to no profit, to the ruin of the hearers. Be diligent to present yourself approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth but shun profane and idle babblings for they will increase to more ungodliness the amplified says study and be eager to do your utmost to present yourself to god approved tested by trial a workman who has no cause to be ashamed correctly analyzing and accurately dividing rightly handling and skillfully teaching the word of god but avoid all empty vain, useless, and idle talk, for it will lead people into more and more ungodliness. Okay? There's some things that's just not worth, not worth spending your time listening to. Okay? And there's some things that's just like, oh, that's just foolishness. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna listen to that. Don't want nothing to do with it. Amen? Hallelujah. Proverbs 4, it says, give attention to my words. Keep your heart with all diligence. Keep your heart with all diligence. Hallelujah. Uh, Proverbs 23, 12 says, Apply your heart to instruction and your ears to words of knowledge. Okay? You know, the Bible talks a lot about hearing. You know, uh, be swift to hear, slow to speak in James. And also says, you know, uh, you know, he that has ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. Okay? And so, you know, be careful how you hear. Be careful what you hear. And because what you feel what you focus on, what you spend time hearing is going to have an effect on you. Amen. Now let's go to Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews 10. And we're going to look at verse 22. Start there. It says, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. 
Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. It says that he that's begun a good work in you is going to finish it. He that promised is faithful. He is going to do his part. All we have to do is ours. Amen. If we do our part, you're going to come out all right. Hallelujah. And it says, and let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works. We need to encourage one another. Man, especially in the days we're living right now, there's people need encouragement. Okay, people, some people are struggling. They're having a hard time. And we need to encourage them. Encourage them. Stir up love and good works. Verse 25, not forsaking the assembling ourselves together as in the manner of some, but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. We need to, we need to be together. You know, not forsaking the assembling of yourselves. You know, I believe one of the tricks of the enemy, and he's using uh, different mayors and governors and, uh, to try to stop and shut down churches, you know, because the enemy doesn't want God's people getting together because they get encouraged, they get blessed. The hope gets back in them. It, it helps them tremendously. Amen. We need that. Hallelujah. So God, I pray that this thing will break. You'll shift it in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And look at Hebrews 12. Hebrews 12. And, and it says in verse 1, Therefore also, since we are surrounded by such a great a cloud of witnesses. This is talking about Hebrews 11, all the heroes of faith. The ones that had faith believed God. Hallelujah. They believed God. It says, Since we're surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let's run with endurance the race that's set before us. So he's encouraging us and saying, Listen, those heroes of faith, you can be like one of them. You can have faith and you can win in life too. You can have, you can win at this thing. Hallelujah. So he's saying, lay aside, weed your garden, tend your garden, get rid of something in your life that isn't working for you, that's causing you to, to pull, pull you down and restricting you. Get rid of that thing, drive it out of your life so that God can move in your life again like he always wanted to do. And it says, lay aside every weight and sin that ensnares us and run with endurance the race that's set before us. Looking unto Jesus. Don't look to Facebook. Look to Jesus. Hallelujah. The author of faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has set down at the right hand of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. So I want to just encourage you that, you know, do what you need to do to keep your life right. All right? You know, Prepare the soil of your heart. You know, stir up the things of God within you. Pray. Do what you need to do. Let the good seed, the word of God, get planted in you. And then when the weeds come and they'll come, pull them out. Clean them out. Take care of them. And then patiently wait for the growth. See, what discourages some is that, you know, you start and, and you, ex you expect it to to progress a lot faster than what you've progressed. And especially in this time. I mean, there's all area, different areas of our life that's like, man, I, I wish we could make some progress here. Move something, okay? But we gotta have patience and like, we're gonna, we're gonna weather this thing, we're gonna get through it and we're not gonna quit. So patiently wait for the growth. Wait for the change. Keep believing. Keep, keep resisting if you need to resist. The more you resist, the, the, the stronger you're going to get. And then experience the joy of the harvest. And experience the joy of the transformation, the manifestation that comes within your life, within your heart. Amen? Hallelujah. And so I encourage you, whatever you're dealing with, man, face it head on. Uh, you may need some help. Uh, you know, if, if you're part of our church... We're here to help you. Different leaders are here, connect leaders. You know, you may have friends, friends that are spiritual, spiritually strong that you can talk with, counsel with, that someone can pray with you, agree with you, stand with you, so that you can, you can keep yourself, get yourself back on course and keep yourself on course. Hallelujah. You know, if, 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 if you've struggled, 
I pray that the power of God, the Spirit of God will stir in you right now. That the, the power of God will, will quicken you. The Holy Spirit will just encourage you right now. I pray for the strength of God to come into you in Jesus' name. And I pray you'll, that God will give you a, a, a course that, to take to walk this thing out and to get free. There's nothing. There's a, you know, the, in fact, the enemy, the enemy lies to us sometimes and says, well, you've committed the unpardonable sin. I haven't found anybody that that would apply to. I don't know anybody that it would apply to, and it doesn't apply to you either. The devil is a liar. Don't believe it. Don't believe it. Trust God. Love God. Get back in church. If you need to be in church, get in church. And, and let God love on you. Let people love on you. Let people encourage you. And become the person that God wants you to be. And if you were there and you've strayed away a little bit, you can get it back. You can get it back. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for watching. And we'll be, we'll be back on YouTube on Sunday at 10 a.m. So if you want to watch then. And God bless you. Have a great night.